Greenspan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm a, uh, my name is Jeff. I'm a native New Yorker. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. I didn't have anything to do with it. My, my parents fucked here, and that's, that's it. <laughs> but they thank you for the applause. Uh, as a native New Yorker, I've experienced all five stages of grief. Do we know the stages? Have we been in therapy? Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Or as I like to call the stages, Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. <laughs> Manhattan's denial, completely. You come to this island thinking you're gonna get something like a bedroom with a door. <laughs> you're in denial. You ever been to a public school in the Bronx? Anger. <laughs> then there's the bargaining of Brooklyn. No, it's the city. <laughs> then you slide into the depression of Queens because no one's gonna visit you in Queens. <laughs> but then there's happiness and acceptance in Staten Island. People from Staten Island are the happiest people you'll ever meet. Not a hope or dream in the bucket. They've given up. And they've accepted where they are in life. And I'm jealous. What can I tell you about my, me? Uh, there's not enough time to, to learn all about each of you, so I'm just gonna tell you about me, if that's okay. Uh, uh, I'm old. I'm an old person. Show some respect for your elders. Uh, I'm 49, uh, and I, I come from a time when, when I was growing up, there were no cell phones. So you couldn't text and get out of something at the last minute. If you had plans with your friends to meet at the movies at 8 o'clock, you had to meet your friend at the movies at 8 o'clock. If, if you had plans with your friends at the movies at 8 o'clock, and your friend didn't show up at 8 o'clock, that meant your friend was dead. <laughs> and then you had to decide, is this movie good enough <laughs> to take my mind off the facts <laughs> that I've just lost a friend? <laughs> but we had three monkeys growing up, so, you know, I never found out what happened to Scott Weitzenberg. He didn't show up for the movies, and I don't know where he is to this day. What else can I tell you about me? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gay? No. I'm not into it. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather be straight. I know that's not a popular viewpoint. But I grew up at a different time. I grew up being told being gay was the worst thing in the world. I grew up, I used to get HIV tested when I was a virgin. I used to get HIV tested when I was a virgin. Because I thought being gay gave you AIDS. It's like I believed in immaculate infection. <laughs> I got a lot of issues with being gay, and I... And I, 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 I uh, come on. <laughs> this, is a, this is a very homophobic mic, if you're cutting out on me here. <laughs> I, I consider this a hate crime. I'm alerting the proper authorities. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like being gay. I, I try to seem less gay. Like, here's how bad it is. It's pretty bad. I'm, I'm exceptional at sucking dick. But sometimes I'll scrape just so I seem like a straight guy who doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah? I don't want to seem like a faggot, you know? But... When I'm sucking dick. Some, pe Some people hate gays so much. Can we, get, can we get another mic by any chance? Is that a possibility? Hold it where? Wow, everyone's a comedian all of a sudden. I'm supposed to hold the wire? What? Change the wire. Change the like this? Everybody, Andy Engel, give it up for is the producer of the show. You want me to take this mic? Okay. I don't know what just happened. 
but this is exactly how I planned it. So <laughs> I'm very excited. I was telling you how much uh, 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 the issues with being gay, yeah. But in the time it took to go through that, I think I've come to terms with it. So I think <laughs> I'm okay now. I, um, some people hate gay people so much they don't think that we should be able to adopt or have kids. And I think this is fascinating. There was a study done on the Upper East Side of Manhattan and it turned out it didn't matter if the parents were two men or two women or a man and a woman as long as the child was raised by a loving Jamaican nanny. <laughs> Everything was fine. Everything was fine. The gay's not gonna rub off on your kids. You're barely spending time with your kids. Other people feel that gays, they, they want to kill all the gays. And I never understood that. If you hate gays so much, you don't have to kill all of them. Just kill the bottoms. Oh my God. So they can't make more gays. Where do you think these gays are coming from? Use your straight brains, people. Come on. Use your straight brains. Oh my God. I, um... Uh, I, 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 don't have any, I don't have that much, <laughs> I don't have that much money anymore. <laughs> I used to have some money. I, I made my money in advertising. Being gay is like the best thing about me at this point now. I worked in advertising. <laughs> I didn't want to kill him when I found that he was gay, but he works in advertising? Yeah, let's string him up. <laughs> so many lies. I, I bought my, my, my first apartment and I paid for it all with lies. Uh, all the lies I've told in advertising. So many lies. And now I'm doing comedy, trying to tell the truth. Can't make a dime. <laughs> so many lies. They're all over. You almost don't even notice them. Like breakfast. What's breakfast? The most important meal of the day. Who do you think came up with that? The lunch association? It was Kellogg's. It's a lie. For a decade, McDonald's told you, you deserve a break today. You don't. <laughs> Not one of you does. You know how I know? Because you live in America. That's the break. <laughs> if you live in a first world country and you're still not happy, a burger won't make it better. <laughs> I was in the shower and I used this shampoo on my beard to wash away the gray. And I was... Wa and I was washing away the gray, and then I realized, you can't wash away gray. It's impossible. You can dye gray, but people from my generation don't want to use a dye, so they called it a shampoo. They got me! They got me! When I was wet and naked and old in the shower. <laughs> if they me, the guy who lies, what are they doing to you, you know? <laughs> All right, well, like I said, I'm old, and my parents are even older than me. So when they, when they call, I'm always worried it's going to be the call. The call. So I changed their name on my phone to, which one's gone? You know? Just to make it fun. Hey, I, everyone has their own process. So the other day, my mom called. She says, Jeff, it's your father. He's in the hospital. He has the hiccups. I said, is he in the hospital and he has the hiccups? Or is he in the hospital because he has the hiccups? <laughs> and she said, yes. At your father's age, hiccups can be very serious. I said, mom, dad's 89 years old. At his age, waking up is very serious. <laughs> the doctors took my father aside and said, Mr. Greenspan, you actually suffered a minor stroke. And he said, really? And they said, no, we're just trying to scare you. You still got the hiccups? He did. He, he did still have the hiccups. <laughs> I said, Mom, what is it that you want me to do on the phone? She goes, you could show a little compassion for your father. That's all I ask. So I said, fine, put him on the phone. So I got on the phone with him, and I reminded him that I'm gay. <laughs> and while you can't scare the hiccups out of someone, you, you can't disappoint them out. He's, <laughs> he's better. I'm Jeff. Have a great show. Thank you very much. <laughs>